Hey everyone, um, we're up to, I believe it's number five in our, maybe four in our, <laughs> our capabilities for new era leaders. I'm going to go back through them now. Um, first one, raising your tolerance for uncertainty and ambiguity. Second capability, personal resilience. Um, third, we've talked about positive conflict. Fourth, we've talked about cognitive dissonance. What we're up to now is courage. So courage is a really interesting one, right? Because it's a bit like resilience. We think of it as um, being really brave and making these big moves and that fear is something to be conquered. And um, yeah, we think about courage as, as making the big moves, the bold moves. And like I just, I wanted to share with you this quote. So um I've, I've done a bit of work around looking at fear and um, and this this quote comes from an idea from um, Krishnamurti around his work on fear uh, and he suggests that fear isn't something that's terrible and lurking in the shadows and it's you know fear isn't what we think of in in that sense of we can see it and we're terrified of it and it's yeah. He talks about fear being much closer and quite lovely and seductive. And so I sort of interpreted some of his work as, um, as this idea that it's the corner office. It's the enormous salary. It's the sense of comfort that comes from feeling secure in our, fund, in our foundation. That sense of knowing that we're good at what we do. And so that we never need to learn that lesson of fluidity because everything we've done so far has has got us to this point. And if we continue to build on what we have, um, then that will that will get us to where we need to be. And yet, we wake up one day yearning for more. And I think when I came across this definition, it really struck me, and I'm, I'm still working with it, uh, this idea that fear is not something big and scary, and you know, it's not the monster under the bed. It's actually that thing that we find comfort in. That's our, that's our fear showing up, as, as though those things that we find comfort in and those things that we gravitate towards that make us feel warm and cozy and comfortable um, in the context of change programs. Uh, and so how do we get around that? Like, what does courage look like uh, in these situations? And so I want to, I want to lay out a couple of anti-patterns because I think these will cause a little bit of friction and a bit of disruption for people. Um, but the anti-patterns that I see around courage. Courage is not big commitments, bold decisions, um, usually in the large like projects of work, usually in the form of large programs of work, big initiatives and lots of money and big ideas. It's not courage. Um, courage is not... taking the path of an acceptable form of failure. And the example I use here is um, we've all been in that workshop where we've, we've got a group of people in the room to discuss a project that needs to happen within nine months because somebody said so. And we have a certain amount of money that's associated with that. And so we get into this workshop to start planning out what we're going to do for this idea. And very quickly it becomes apparent that this is a three-year program of work, not a nine-month program of work. And... The unacceptable form of failure is to go, hang on a minute, three years, nine months, this is never going to work. What if we took a different approach to this and we took a different approach to our way of working and instead of just running through with this project and pretending like we're going to cram it into nine months, what if we actually changed the entire way that we worked and we started to look at learning what improvements we could make within that nine months or learning for a period as to what's going to get us the biggest benefit um, or the biggest hit on value for our customers and, and let's just do that rather than all of these other things that somebody has put in scope. You know, it, that, that's an un, it, to go down that path and then fail is, is an unacceptable form of failure and all too often we choose the easy path and we choose the path of, no, no, we'll scope out this three-year program of work but we'll call it nine months and then we'll simply issue a change request as we get through the project because... That's an acceptable form of failure. 
um, because it's taking the known method. It's it's working within all of the things that we've known. It's not stepping outside of anybody's comfort zone. Um, it's it's within our organizational consciousness of what is the right way to do things. And so we'll stay within that box, knowing full well that there's no way we can achieve it within nine months. But that form of, a fail of failure is somehow more acceptable than trying to do something entirely different and then failing. And so courage is not choosing the acceptable form of failure without challenging that overall paradigm of what the heck are we doing here. Courage is not building a big idea and a brand new system without an understanding of the current. You know, I think all too often we hear that conversation where um, we talk about well, we're going to go down this path of this big new idea and somebody says, what do we know about how it works today? And we get that snap reaction of, no, no, it's not about what we're doing today because we're going to do it entirely differently. And the reality is that we can't design entirely different if we don't understand how it's working today and how well it's working today because if we don't understand that, then, understand that, then how can we be sure that we have designed out um, those reasons for failure in today's current system? So courage is not any of those things. I think courage is, is again, it's a lot more subtle. It, courage is stepping away from that comfort. To some degree, as leaders, as, as bold, you know, Trojan horses in our organization, we're comfortable making big commitments and bold decisions and vision statements and then going after it. It's not courage. Courage is getting into that icky space of like, where's my comfort zone? And how do I go and like push up against that and kind of stretch the bubble a little bit um, and to step away from all those things that make me feel comfortable? The corner office, the big salary, the way of working that got me all of these uh, symbols around me of success. So courage is a gnarly one and it shows up in so many ways and I, I guess what I want you to take away from this conversation today is I want you to take a look at examining the more subtle signs of courage within yourself and within others not the big bold stuff or you know the grandiose kind of commitments not not that not that big stuff go back to the subtlety I want you to go back and to spend some time reflecting on the subtlety of your own courage and those small moves that are actually really big internal moves um, and reflect on how those are happening for you today, whether those are happening for you today or whether you are maybe in a space of other big gestures where sometimes some of those smaller, less comfortable gestures might be a truer expression of courage for yourself and for your team. Um, so that's what I want you want to leave you with today. A little bit of uncomfortability around, around bravery and, and around our definition of bravery and, and our understanding of what that looks like. So please hit me up with a comment below. I would love to hear from you. Um, as per usual, you know, I try and pick a topic that's got a little bit of disruption in it and, and I love getting your feedback. So drop me a comment, hit me up with an email. Let me know what you're thinking. And uh, I hope wherever you are in the world today, you're having an awesome, awesome day. And I will see you again next week.